something discuss it with the psychiatrist you guys also can't put everything else on everybody else you got to learn to talk about it with each other discuss it with the psychiatrist that's why she's coming whatever <laughs> that's why she's coming <laughs> so anyways how about them buccaneers we don't need to attack each other no of course not with like saying oh well you did this and you did that and you know, like that kind of and me everybody's got issues with one another you need to Get it out through her. Why is it the only time you can talk to somebody else? If, like you're scheduled to talk to somebody. You're saying I don't care about you? No, Nick, I'm talking about everybody. I just wish people would actually listen. I'm sitting here going crazy, and it, I have to go crazy until somebody sits me down with a doctor. What I'd like to do is if, if you can go, if I, we can go around the room or if someone can start and just give me a little bit of background. Well, basically, um, <clears throat> it really started off in Florida with all of us. We had always been living in a, in a very chaotic atmosphere. Ups and downs, a lot of like one day it was a big fight and like they would come in the room and be like, we're going to divorce, who do you want to live with? And then the next day it was like they didn't even remember it, but we did. I remember we would go into our rooms and we would kind of like just hide in the closet and cry. And what, what were the incidents that really stands out in all of your minds that defines what your family means to you? Well, it was very hypocritical yeah. at certain times because we were taught like, it's about family, and it's don't about family. Lie, you know, don't never lie, lie, don't lie, don't cheat. So when they would argue, what would you guys do? You said that you we, we would just go hide. together. Hide and... We would all hide together. They would come in and they would ask us, who do you want to live with? You have to pick right now, we're divorcing. I want to rebuild my family, and if it's going to take a little time, then it's going to take some time, it's and I'm willing to do that. So, Nick, it can't us. be just on your terms. <laughs> you got to learn who Aaron say. is, and who I am, and who each individual person is. I feel like do, a lot of time nobody really gives do, a damn about half the stuff I do. But can we do this? Can I go around the room, and can each of you tell each other something to the group that you think they don't know about you? I feel like I was responsible for the divorce. As far as I can remember, the first fight I ever saw them get in, I always was in the middle and I was always trying to stop it. There was a point where it was all cool and even when Nick was in the business, but as soon as I got in it, it got really, really messed up. It was up. never cool though, Aaron. You were never, you never responsible. I know, but at the end of the marriage with them, they weren't fighting over me. They were fighting for my money. And I was used from the get-go. They put like me into music right as soon as I was like six years old. I just wanted to be home and going to school and I'm the only one in the family who, I didn't even see a day of high school. I didn't see proms. I didn't see any of that stuff. Maybe I'm a stronger person today because of it. Maybe. I feel like I am. Thank you, Aaron. I think that's an important thing to put out there. Can I go to you uh, next? When something went wrong between our family, it was always my fault, even if it was somebody else's fault. So I, I always took that. I dealt with that. I always took that in. For so many years, I was the provider of my family at the age of like 15, 16 and on. I feel like you like your friends more than you like your own family members. Yeah. You don't think that I, I don't want to be closer to you? I don't know, but that's always the way it seems. Leslie, I saw so many people that had families and, and great families and brothers and sisters that, and they were just, everything was cool and everything was calm and they knew how to communicate with each other. And I so badly didn't have that. And I, I believe that we did have that at one point before everything started in the, in the business, mm -hmm. but then it shattered. It, it just all came tumbling down. And that's what I'm trying to do is pick up the slack, you know, and, and sacrifice in some ways. And it's difficult But I don't know if that's your responsibility to do that. that. And I think that's another so, thing, because if, if you're trying to do that, it, it puts you in a lose-lose situation. Did part of your coping, did it mean just, just withdrawing into yourself and being as strong as you could? This is exactly what I can relate to you, Leslie. I was forced to be strong, and no matter what, I've, I've taken that with me, the older I've gotten. No matter how many times people could stab me in my back or hurt me, I've always said, suck it up, because that's what Dad told me. I was the one who got to um, 
I got to experience more a social school thing. And I ended up with like the really bad crowd. But because my parents were so focused on them, I was kind of allowed to just do whatever I wanted to. I got in trouble and like I was really, really a bad Trying bad. to get their I was, attention. I was a bad, I, don't, I didn't do it to try to get their attention, but maybe subconsciously I was. I didn't go to school hardly at all. I would come home so up out of my mind and they wouldn't even notice. No one really ever noticed me. So my issue is that I feel like the way like sometimes when I say things like no one really listens or like they always think that my intentions are immediately bad when it's like sometimes not. Sometimes you talk to me, I misunderstand like you being like, you can come and say something to me and it just you just have like this look about you. What's going on here? Like she's got like this. The reason like, why I have some about issues her. with BJ like, and I'll, I'll say them is because when you drink, like last week she came into my room and she was drunk. I was laying in my bed going to sleep and my friend was in the bed with me and she came in and said, oh, well, I'm prettier than you without makeup on and da 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 da. I and, don't like, even you remember are saying scum that, you and, da, da, da. and it's like your true feelings come out when you're drunk. So I think that that's like, not wow, is that her true, true. feelings? No, like, that's not necessarily and true. And it's me. every single time she's drunk, I try, I, I try to go away. I don't want to go out with her. I don't. I don't want to be around it because nobody she likes to always, be around you when you're drunk. She, she's a Everybody mean doesn't drunk. like you at all when you're drunk. Everyone in this family thinks I'm an alcoholic, but I can really take it or leave it. I just enjoy drinking because it just, it, uh, it's sad to say, it sets my mind free. I can be a pretty nasty drunk, but it's mostly when I'm around you guys. I have fun with everyone else when I drink. And you attacked me for no reason. I was just laying in my bed. The biggest issue I have is. The fact that they always say I'm too sensitive. I want you to know how I feel. I want them to know exactly how I feel. And that can sometimes be a lot for people who seem to shut themselves off. Then I started doing my music career. And when I got heavier, it didn't work out. I ended up not being somebody that they can make money off of. You know what mom did? Mom sent me away to a fat camp. She told me it was a horseback riding place. And when I got there, two big men grabbed me. She told me I was going to a summer camp, like to go have some fun. I felt like I was totally thrown away. I want to be looked at as a good person. Not this angry person, but unfortunately that is my only way of letting you know that there is something wrong. And I'm tired of feeling like I'm way too sensitive. I don't think I'm too sensitive. I think I want to talk. I want to tell people. I want to, somebody to listen. I just want to be loved too, baby. Okay. Me too. Good. Me too. You guys have done amazing. You are so honest and so clear, and I think that's such a huge step. What I would say to all of you is it would be wonderful if you had some individual time to sort of speak to someone and sort out things for Fire yourselves. Yourself. All right, guys? All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, right. No, thank, thank you. You, so you guys are great. Don't you feel better? I do. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Ciao. Bye-bye. for starting this early. Jada. Darren? Jada took massive out there. It was her because I had all the other three dogs. Oh, that's no big deal. And clean the dad coming here. You didn't clean the dog? No. Please? No. Aaron, I'm so tired of cleaning up. And it's your dog. Somebody keeps coming. Fine, I'll 
Do it for you, Aaron, you lazy little God, I'm constantly pitted up after everybody else. God. You keep your dog in your room from now on. Who's that? Me, Daddy. Yeah. Dad! Oh my God! Oh. Hey, Ginger. How are you? I've already cleaned up three piles of dog today. No one else cleans up after their dogs around here. I'm sick of it. I'm down to one dog. Well, good for you. <laughs> One got eaten by an alligator. One got eaten by an alligator? Who? Bell. <gasps> the doctor's here. <laughs> How you doing, son? Uh, what are you doing with all these dogs? I know you got to be the culprit. Did you learn anything? Huh? Let me see your side. I'm not hurt. No, it looks pretty good. Oh. <laughs> Ginger. Hey, honey. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Leslie! Dad's here. Come here. Say hi to Dad. Leslie. He was very excited to see you. He was like, Leslie's got the cleanest room of everybody. What? Come on. Dad! Hey, what are you doing there, big girl? Huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. What? What? <gasps> what? <laughs> what you can say to me? Hmm? Let's see, you look good. Mm. The blues are getting old. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing good. Oh. What are you doing that for? Nothing. <laughs> you cried for it. Indeed, like two years. Well, show me something then. Oh, it's oh, God. Yeah, there we go. That's what I remember. <laughs> mm. Let's take a little stroll. I see you got the cleanest room in all in place. <laughs> So what have you been doing lately? Retired. Where do you live? In Florida? Florida. Oh, okay. Same place. No, I don't know what he is, dude. Like, he was supposed to go back to the crib last night. I thought he was going back to the house, but I guess he might have gone and just stay with some chick. Right, you're looking good. There. Don't hit it, Nick. What? Because he should Hey, good language. Man, I teach you nothing. I know that woman from the front to the back. Just she the comes back. from a dramatic family. Right. They know how to play it. Mom is not well. You know what? Uh, Dad, well, that's choice. Dad, that's by choice. Hey, let me. I could be not well too. Dad, by Dad, choice. Do you even care about her? I care about her for the mother of my children. You it's never nice. loved her enough to care that she you put concerned? me out of love 15 years Are ago. Are you concerned? Are you listening to me? You haven't loved her for 15 years? Nope. Wow. You didn't live what I lived. So yeah. leave it alone. Leave it alone. Mom, it's Leslie. Um, just want to let you know Dad's here at the house, and I think, and Ginger too. And um, I'm a little stressed out. Um, call me back, all right? Love you, bye. That's your mom. She's got to stop trying to make you guys feel guilty. I'm just kind of weak. 
Stop. Stop, stop being weak. You got to step up and be the man. You got to put the foot down and say, that's it. I love you, but I'm not your cash cow anymore. And that's what your name used to be, cash cow. Nick, you're supposed to be here. Dad's here. I'm worried about Nick. Now I think Chris's phone is dead. Nick, it's so Leslie. Um, so um, we're wondering where you're at. Uh, I guess you've gone here. missing. We're really worried about you. Anyway, just call us back, all right? Love you. Bye. Whoops. You know what I did one day to her? I was like, can we put the two weeks in first? Well, let's make this a joyous occasion. I'm trying. I didn't even want to come here. I didn't either, if you want to know the truth. Yeah. She just. I was like, I'm not going. No way. Why did you come? Because your dad said I was going. Why did you come? Because you told me to come. <laughs> Since when do you do anything I tell you to do? I'm always listening. Oh, you're crazy. I'm sorry, you know. I'm Don't always... say sorry. It's not you. You're not, it's not your fault. I know, but if there's anything I can do, I don't want you to think that I hate you because I don't hate you. I just hate things that happen. It wasn't my fault about you and your, your mother and your dad. I, I didn't break them up. I didn't even know your dad. She'd already left him by then. Yeah, for like all months. her stuff was already gone. Bob had already went to jail. There were restraining orders. Basically. Yeah, she had a restraining order on him. I don't hate my dad. I just don't know what to do. I don't hate my dad. I just don't know what to do. I mean, about what, though? I don't know about how I mean, why can't you act, act your... And... Act normal. Act like his daughter. That's what you I are. Know. He loves you. I'm trying. He but loves you more than anything. Here. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, and I'm proud of you. I love your music. You're finally doing what the way you wanted no it to do. Who cares about anything I do? What did I just say? You never like to talk. Well, of course I did, because I had a lot of stuff on my mind back then. I mean, you know. I, mean, I tried to talk to you before. I know you did. So now it's better just to hear it all, put it on the table, and be done with it. No, well, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm sitting here crying in front of, of you guys. It it's not an easy thing to do, and I'm finally seeing you again yeah. for the first time in, like, a long time. <laughs> so let's not stop it now, OK? We're going to eat some good okay. food today. Yeah. We're going to have a good right. time. I really missed you. I missed you, too. <laughs> now that's behind us. Let's put it behind You're like my best friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel OK, you are? This is what you did. You did a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's okay, very guys. popular. All right, now that we got it. Do you have a lot of brown share? Because it takes a lot. Know, cool. okay, we got to go look for him, dude. I know. He's missing. Nick is missing. Nick, Sh Shadow, Shadow and Chris don't know where he is. Shadow yeah. and Chris do not know where Nick is. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Nick is missing. Uh, you look the same. What the hell? Well, 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 <laughs> you might look a little older. <laughs> Nick, you're in a magazine where it says the hardest partiers. Nick Carter. Hey, Nick Are you serious? Yeah. There's a picture of you like really drunk <laughs> everywhere. I get it from this Captain Crown over here. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. This is Mike. Yep, how's it going? Let me get my gun out here. Hold on. Man. Nice <laughs> to meet you. All right. What's wrong with that other arm? That don't work? Uh, OK, all right. <laughs> He's old. Oh, baby. <laughs> He's old compared to me. Well, my wife is 22 years younger than me, so yeah. what's that make me, Grandpa? Yes. Ah! <laughs> no, it makes me good. <laughs> makes you good. <laughs> don't let me down now. All right, all right. Because I will. I know where you live. Teach her the things. Yeah. Don't teach her too much. No, no, no. <laughs> She's teaching me more about... Well, no, that, don't even talk to me about that one. All right, well, I'll see you guys later. Right. Love you, Dad. Where are you going? Right, love you too. I gotta go rehearse. All right, man. You take care now. There's some butter. It's not melted. Let's melt it. <laughs>
Sit down, guys. Come on, Papa Smurf. I'm coming, I'm coming. Hey, you can sit in the head, Dad. Sit in the head of the table. All right. Boys and girls, thanks for inviting me. And glad that you know, I have this opportunity to be with my children. You are my family. We all love you. You're stuck with it. We are it. We are it. We are it. We have no animosity of what's going on behind us, and we just want success for everybody here. I gotta say one thing too. I love you guys, and even though we've gone through ups and downs and had bad times, and you know, I think it's time for the good times to start happening. Absolutely. And, uh, love you all. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> This is so funny. Every time we sit down at the dinner table, Nick starts off with a little speech like you. And it just reminded me of Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Oh, well, he does.